So last week I uh, was in the uh, congressional complex uh, during the um, insurrection uh, and the um, attack on the Capitol. Um, I was there because my sister, uh, Carolyn Bordeaux, had uh, recently uh, been elected to Congress. Um, she's representing Georgia's seventh congressional district, uh, was uh, the only um, the only uh, newly elected member of Congress to flip a district from a red district to a blue district uh, in the last election cycle. Uh, and so I'd gone to DC as her one family member uh, to um, witness her getting sworn in uh, on Sunday, uh, which was you know, really emotional and wonderful uh, to watch her take uh, the oath of office. Um, and However, uh, I was you know, very celebratory, um, but I actually, when I first got into the city, um, I drove down, I really you know, was immediately impressed with the sort of general atmosphere of um, you know, malevolence, uh, maliciousness. It really did feel uh, like, you know, I, I work in uh, crisis affected states and places that have um, had uh, civil wars uh, and a lot of uh, political violence. Um, and it really did feel very similar to those environments, uh, to Kosovo, to Haiti. Um, and I really remarked on it with, uh, you know, with, with my friends and family. Um, so I decided to stay a little bit longer, uh, not come back immediately because I was concerned about uh, her safety and kind of what might be needed and if she'd need any extra support. Um, and so on Wednesday, we were, you know, we we're pretty prepared and we talked a lot about, um, about safety and security for her and her staff. Um, and on Wednesday morning, she went into the office and uh, was really preparing her speech, uh, her first uh, floor speech uh, to defend the vote in Georgia. We expected that the uh, Georgia um, Electoral College uh, votes would be contested. Um, and so she was preparing her speech and I decided to bring uh, her and her staff lunch. Uh, and I went in around, I guess, 1 or 1.30. Um, and really I hadn't gotten in the door very far uh, when they um, did send out a notice uh, over the, um, by, by the Capitol Hill police to you know, go into lockdown, lock all the doors. Um, and we could hear, you know, outside the crowds uh, marching past, you know, her office. We could, um, you know, hear a lot of the, the shouting and we kind of joked. We're like, wow, it doesn't sound like the Medicare for all people out there. They had been, um, they had been protesting in the days previous. So anyway, we, we were there, but still I was like, okay, lock the doors. It's okay. But then about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, they're like, no, you know, all go into a single room, get behind as many locked doors as you can, turn off the lights, turn off the cell phones um, or anything that might um, make a noise. Um, and, uh, you know, do not go out into the hallways. Uh, and so at that point, you know, we were like, oh, that's concerning. We were watching what was happening on TV outside. Um, uh, right around the corner, and um, we, uh, you know, there's thousands of people in front of the Capitol, extraordinarily angry crowd, um, and we thought, well, okay, they're at least outside the building, and about, I don't know, 15 minutes went by, and I looked up, and I was like, well, gosh, actually, it seems like the crowd is thinning, uh, but of course, it was not thinning. Uh, all of those thousands of people were now uh, coursing through the Capitol building, and of course, the office buildings are, you know, connected. Um, to the Capitol building. And that was really when I became frightened. I, I, you know, I was like, okay, this is, you know, thousands of people coursing through the hallways here. Um, certainly this is, you know, very, very unsafe. Um, and so, you know, we, we sort of hunkered down and, you know, when you're in those moments, I think, unfortunately, many people have experienced them. You have this kind of fight or flight, you know, idea. Um, and at one point I was like, oh, maybe we should get up and, and leave. Uh, you know, we'll just blend in with the crowds. I did not want to have a confrontation of people knocking down the door and finding us there. Um, and so, you know, we kind of considered it. Of course, you know, the, that was probably a bad idea. Um, and, and we discounted it. But um, right around the same time, we did get uh, text messages from uh, other members of Congress who were sheltering in place. Some of them were on the House floor, were describing, you know, shots being uh, coming through the doors, uh, tear gas in the rotunda. Um, and in particular, uh, two, uh, well, more than that, uh, Congress uh, people who were also newly elected with Carolyn uh, reached out and uh, were talking about, you know, they did not know that they were going to survive the day. Um, and they were, you know, very 
frightened and we're talking about, oh, I might never see my, my three-year-old daughter again. Um, what if I don't make it out of here? And some of the comments were made by uh, congressional members who were black. And I thought, okay, so these are not people that are thinking about going out and melding it in with this crowd. Um, which is, I bring that up because uh, probably the most horrifying part of the entire experience um, was uh, after um, the building was made secure and uh, the proceedings um, started again on the, on the house floor. Uh, you know, we really had to wait uh, for well into the night, uh, listening to the um, false, uh, lie, you know, uh, untruthful um, concerns uh, on the part of Republican colleagues that, you know, the election had been stolen, that things, you know, had not been fair, uh, that, you know, this was the last resort. And as we we're listening to them, I mean, literally many of us still shaking from, you know, what was a life, potentially life-threatening event, you know, it really struck me that, you know, we're sitting there having to listen uh, to these people's complaints, to their, you know, trumped up concerns, pun intended, uh, you know, to what they want to talk about. And we were going to be sort of forced to to sit there and 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 wait and listen to it until ultimately, of course, we could we could take the the, the vote, um, and my sister could vote to um, to certify the election. And for me, that was just a very violent aspect of the proceedings, um, and it really spoke to me about the need for sort of two things. Um, the first is that it was very important to me immediately after that we consider carefully the language that we use to describe what happened on Wednesday. Um, and at the time, immediately after, there was a lot of, oh, it was a riot that got out of hand. It was a protest. You know, it was a stunt. It was a political stunt. Um, and, you know, having been there, you know, it, it was very clear for folks that were there that this was a coup attempt and that this was an insurrection. Um, and the reason I... Uh, you know, really think that those are important words to use is because I think they most accurately describe the predicament that we are now in and can help us think about what we need to do next. Um, I have really enjoyed, uh, there's a piece written by Fiona Hill uh, recently about why she would categorize this as a coup attempt. Um, but I think it's important to use that word because this wasn't a, a event that just, oh, you know, Trump went out and just got excited and was really disappointed over losing the election and just used strong words and some people took them the wrong way. This didn't just materialize out of nowhere. There has been years and months, you know, uh, put into uh, of effort on his part to try to to overturn the election and stay in power. That is his goal. Uh, and he has tried to manipulate every aspect of the military in order to support him in that. He has tried to use communication uh, tools um, like Twitter to, to, uh, uh, and social media to try to organize people and, and lead them to do uh, violent things. Um, you know, he has, and Fiona Hill kind of goes through it, you know, use the judiciary, other governing institutions, um, and certainly leaned in on the legislatures uh, to try to uh, support him. And of course, all of this is happening, you know, my sister's from Georgia. So in particular, Trump has, you know, uh, intervened in, in uh, tried to get the Georgian Secretary of State, who's a Republican, and get the governor to overturn the election in Georgia to try to cheat. Um, and so this was an event that came, you know, was the end pathway after months of effort on his, on his part. Um, so coup does describe it. Now, how is he trying to uh, execute the coup? In large measure is to try to appeal to and mobilize a white supremacist fascist movement on his behalf. Um, and I, I think that the element of white supremacy is something that we should not ignore, and we should say that word, um, because um, you know it's white supremacists. Uh, you know, many of the groups that are participating are people that have a, a very a clearly stated uh, their belief in white supremacy, um, and how they are going about this, and why they're going about this is very much aligned with white supremacist 
goals. Uh, you know, so so they believe that they should not be uh, subject to the laws uh, and the rules of this country because they are white. Um, and second of all, they are responding to uh, the, to an election that they feel was quote stolen, uh, an election which was uh, very much determined uh, by the votes of people of color and particularly um, Black Americans uh, in the South and Black women in the South, um, you know, especially in the recent uh, Senate elections. So I think you know, coup, white supremacist. Uh, fascist movement are the words that we need to be using right now to think about um, the predicament that we're in and how we're going to move forward. Um, you know, in terms of how we are going to move forward, I think there are a couple of important things. One is uh, we do need swift, uh, uh, firm accountability uh, on the part of folks that were involved in the uh, Capitol. Uh, uh, attack, uh, but also of the, the, the leaders that set them off uh, to do that and set them up and encourage them to do that. Um, you know, and I think everyone is trying to look for the perfect remedy or the perfect, you know, response. I'm not sure we have one, uh, but I think folks are going through, um, you know, every option from impeachment and conviction uh, to, of course, invoking the 25th Amendment. Um, and now, you know, today in recent days, really considering the 14th Amendment Section 3, which is about um, uh, not allowing uh, people who have uh, fomented an insurrection to hold office. Uh, so I think all of those things are being done. I think the huge challenge that we are uh, going to face is that the Republican Party uh, is so bound up with Trump and this white supremacist fascist movement. Um, it's a little hard to understand how uh, that divorce is going to happen uh, and whether this is a case of co-joined twins. Uh, can you do an operation that um, successfully uh, separates them? Um, Maybe, you know, I'm not sure what the fate of the Republican Party, frankly, is going to be. Um, and it's a little bit hard for me to, to, uh, to come up with remedies that leave that party intact. Um, and, I, you know, and then I think this issue around white supremacy, not only being a sort of a, a violent, uh, something that uh, violent extremists are wrapped up in, but it is also about the, the center of gravity of our political discourse whose concerns should matter. Uh, and, you know, in that moment, listening to um, uh, Republicans get up and talk about why they thought this election was stolen and how unfair it was to them after um, we had been scared for our lives and particularly the black members of Congress uh, had been scared for their lives. I was like, wow, you know, that really does show whose concerns matter right now. And we need to get out of that place. The people who concern should matter uh, should be the duly elected um, representatives uh, who are speaking on behalf of their populations through a democratic process, not folks that want to um, over, overturn and overthrow uh, our, our democracy.